Well, we rely on two different uh, ways. The first one is the scientific world, which goes from the scientific publication to the discussion and the meetings with the people in charge in the anti-doping laboratories or discussion with WADA. And we know that at WADA there is, since a few years, a, a strong, a strong um, how can I say, link with the pharmaceutical industry so that the World Anti-Doping Agency and the uh, people involved in anti-doping can be aware on which substances which are uh, currently under uh, investigation in the pharmaceutical companies could have a potential for abuse and misuse by cheaters. The other way is from information and discussion that we have with people which are in the field. It can be team doctors, can be writers, can be people of the uh, team staff, which can bring us information that they have heard or they have seen and things like that. So we can have information coming from two different sources, science and field. The, the anti-doping program from the UCI relies on, let's say, two different aspects. The first one is prevention. In prevention, we um, have put in place different tools. We have the True Champions or Cheat program, which is for all the uh, athletes which are in the registered testing pool and in the major professional teams. It's an online program which gives them an overview of the anti-doping uh, program, the anti-doping rules, and which are their rights and their duties and so on. Then we have contacts with different group of athletes at different event where we can present them with uh, uh, information or uh, education programs and we've done it several times uh, at uh, continental championships or things like that. We have a youth uh, congress which is mandatory for all juniors which compete at the World, uh, World Championship. And there also we have started uh, to give them information on some anti-doping uh, issues like nutritional supplements or things like that. Then we have started to uh, put in place a study on the professional teams and what is defined as the entourage of the athlete. We know that the entourage has a great influence on the decision of an athlete to dope or not to dope. So we are wanted to, to, to evaluate and study how did the team work, how were they organized, who was responsible for what in, in each teams, in order to put in place uh, some kind of, let's say, guidelines for team structure and organization which can, in a certain way, protect against uh, the, the use uh, of doping substances. And this study is currently uh, ongoing with the Institute of uh, Sports Science of the University of Lausanne. We have put in place other measures which aim to prevent doping. The first one was the no-needle policy. It is clear that injection of non-forbidden drugs are the first step into a more sophisticated uh, doping program. And this rule has been introduced in 2011 and also have been applied by the IOC at the recent London Games for the first time. Finally, the UCI Management Board has also introduced new rules which prevent people involved with doping uh, 
let's say, an outlet which has been suspended for uh, an anti-doping rule violation, to come back once his career as a rider is finished within another function in the cycling family as team manager, as coach, as a soigneur, as whatever, he will not be entitled to do that. So this is what is called prevention and is something that we are going to develop more and more in the coming years, also in cooperation with national federations and national anti-doping organization because several um, programs already exist and we want to, to cooperate with the, those instances which have put them in place.